Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Before I start, I want to appreciate the first guest speaker. The message was wonderful. It was a wow. It was a mind blowing. Thank you so much, sir, for that deep inspiration, a deep revelation, rather. More grace, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I'm here to enlighten us or to take us on the medical aspects of the effects or the consequences of abortion. As our guest speaker has already said, he said, abortion is the process of the termination of life. So medically, we will say it is the termination of pregnancy. Uh -huh. Either by medicine or through medical procedure or a surgical procedure. That is how we put it in the medical form. It is when a woman decides not to continue with the progress of the pregnancy, then she signs a, a consent form that she wants to terminate it. And there are diverse reasons why people conclude in, in indulging in abortion. What are some of the reasons that people involved in this abortion of a thing? Number one reason here, we have financial reasons. Some, of, some people will, will be experiencing financial constraints. They feel they are not financially buoyant and they will not be able to carry on. They won't be able to faint for the baby that is coming. They won't be able to care for themselves throughout the period of the pregnancy. And as such, they end up signing for it. Some reasons, another reason here is because a woman gave birth this year, let's say early, late last year. In the next three months, she's pregnant again and she wants to have another one in the next nine months, which is this year. So some women find it difficult to some people will say concerning them. So that's not baby needs time to grow, they need time to take care of the baby, they need time to recover from the strains, the strains and stress of the previous pregnancy, delivery, and childbearing. So in a, and as, as such, they involve in abortion. Some of them is because they are not getting support from their partners. So for that reason, they want to terminate this soul that is coming. They want to terminate this pregnancy. They can't just cope when their partner is not supporting them. Mm -hmm. Most of them, they'll say, I did not plan for this pregnancy. I did not in any way. This one is a mistake. Hmm. Came by mistake. So for that reason, I don't, it's not staying, it's not staying. I can't carry it. Let it just go. So for some reasons, they will say, uh, they, they are in a program, maybe they, educationally, they are running a program. Some of them will say, uh, uh, they, they, they are doing some things that, Pregnancy will disturb. So for such reason, they want to terminate the pregnancy. So medically, some, some people will have health issues that they must have been told that, Madam, for a specific period of time, you are supposed to prevent anything that will make you get pregnant. So yeah. in the long run, they fail to prevent such thing and it comes, the next thing in their mind is termination of the pregnancy. Some people also involved in this abortion of a thing because they feel they are, they are, they are, they are of age. They, they are, they are, they are, they've have grown the age of childbearing. Now what will people say concerning them? Is it at the age of 50, at the age of 45? And they are, no, my children are grown up. I can't be carrying pregnancy at this stage when my daughter is already in her husband's house. My son is married. So how, how on earth will I say it that I'm pregnant for their father? So some women also involved in 
abortion in that aspect. And there, this abortion of 18 has its own side effects. One of the side effects is bleeding. Immediate side effect is bleeding. And this bleeding may be life-threatening because in a situation whereby a woman is having a very low blood level and she now end up losing some blood, she is mm -hmm. in danger. Mm -hmm. The bleeding may be controlled. It may not be controlled. In a situation where it's not being controlled, it's yeah, the reverse the end product of it is death because by the time you are trying to stop blood from coming out from a lady and it's not stopping, you have tried all your your mm -hmm. your best to make sure that yes, prevention to the end product. Then some side effects that women also have, they may have cramps after this abortion, they have abdominal cramp. They feel dizzy as a result of the loss of blood for those that the bleed the bleeding is was controlled. So as a result, they will feel dizzy. Then some will be feeling drowsiness because there are some medi uh, surgical procedure that you, you do that you have to introduce some medications into this fellow in order for her to go in deep sleep. By the time she comes back from it, she oh. still feels drowsy for some time. And after a period of time, the thing wears off her system. And there is a situation where also where some women also experience this vomiting. They vomit excessively as a result of abortion. And all these symptoms resolve within a short period of time. But so for some people, it stays longer. It depends on the body system. There are still some further complications that can happen as a result of this abortion there can be damage to the womb or the service mm. that is the house the place that houses the fetus there can be a damage to that very part organ in the body then there can be excessive bleeding as i've earlier said incomplete abortion can also re resolve in the woman, that's, there, are, there, are some men, there are some women that take pills, like our, our brother have rightly said, that some women indulge in this uh, introduction of cytotech. Some they drink it, some they insert and all of that. But in a situation whereby it's not complete, if the abortion is not complete, they are still going to undergo a surgical procedure. In a, a situation whereby they, they have to be dilated and the curettes the remaining particles that is in the system in order to prevent bleeding or infection. Then there is infection to the fallopian tubes as a result of this abortion of the thing because there are some surgical procedure that is being carried out by, by quarks. If the instrument is not well sterilized, it can make this woman go down with infection, which can spread into the fallopian tubes. There, there can be scarring of the uterus, the inside of the uterus, as a result of that curettage. She can, uh, she, she can sustain some injuries there that can lead to scar tissues in her uterus sepsis can come in and if the sepsis is not well treated it can result to shock mm -hmm. there can be perforation of the uterine tube of the uterine wall the uterus itself can be perforated as a result of the, 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 there's this uterine sound we use they want to check the depth of the uterus they want to see if this uh, the, the, if it's well contracted and all of that so as a result of introduction of instrument into the uterus, it can be perforated. That is, they are, in, this, in this kind of case, it is when women have indulged in it severally and the, their, their, their uterine wall is now fragile. The next thing is 
uterine perforation and death can follow if all these complications are not well managed. There are still some future health risks if as a, as, a, as a result of this abortion. Maybe they, they do it and they got, they came out from it, but there are still some future health risk that this woman can experience. One of it is future preterm deliveries. Mm -hmm. She has undergone abortion severally. The service is now weak because it is the service that will hold the, the pregnancy till 10. So it is at 10, the service will start dilating for the baby to make way out. But in a, a situation whereby the service is now, it's, it's, been, it, it, it's weak in nature, is fragile. By the time she is now carrying a pregnancy, she wants to bring that life. She wants it to get to time. She wants to have this baby. She end up having premature babies because of the effect of the abortion she had done previously on the service. Then this woman is also pregnant. Yes, during pregnancy, in order to feed this baby by the time this baby comes out. And guess, the first guest speaker said, he said, pregnancy is a process. Breast cells and in, involve in, in process by the time pregnancy sets in. It's getting matured, preparing for the uh, lactation. But in a situation whereby abortion is being done, you have stopped the process of that maturation. And as such, if the woman is having some asymptomatic uh, cancerous cells in her system, so the cells can now develop immaturely and she goes down with breast cancer. Then another future health risk that she can also undergo is this pelvic inflammatory disease or sexually transmitted disease. Before the abortion occur, there are some women that would have had sexually transmitted infections in their system already, which is not known to them. They've not started showing symptoms. There is, there is a presence of chlamydia in their system at the uterine with their cervix and all of them. So during the in the introduction of those instruments to dilate and curate, bring out the, the product of conception in her. This, I mean, that tends to spread in her. Then after which she goes down with infection. And if it's not treated, this inflammation, this uh, infection can spread, disturbing the pregnant, the, the, the um, the reproductive organs, which will now make her go down with infertility. So abortion affects the mental health of a woman. A woman that has undergone abortion and she now ended up having uterine perforation or some of them she end up having a chronic PID that was not treated. And at the end of the day, this is now time for her to have her babies. They are not forthcoming. By the time she, she goes back to the hospital, investigations were being carried out and she now discover the effect of the abortion she did before fetal status and that uh, of such she's going to be feeling having feeling of guilt ah what have i done to myself she'll be so grievous she will be feeling sad in fact she will be depressed anxiety will set in insomnia she will be disturbed she will have disturbed sleep pattern all of these things it's as a result of the abortion that she has involved in. Then it can also affect her sexual life, the sexual dysfunction as a result of abortion. 
some women experience this after abortion. Well, and as at this time, there is increase in vaginal dryness after abortion. There's this decreased sexual desire. They don't want to have it because of the pain that they've undergo. If they have a flashback, they don't even want to have sex with their partner again. There's painful intercourse as a result of the dry vagina. So in a nutshell, abortion is not a thing that a woman should indulge in. Because if we look at the consequences, the effects of it medically on women, it is something that should be prevented. And in order to prevent this abortion, what should our women do? It is a question. And it is something that women need to put into consideration because we have known that it is deadly, it is life-threatening, it is something that can affect us medically, psychologically, socially, it can affect our social life. So I haven't know all this. Is there no need for us to prevent this thing? Because prevention is always better than cure. So that takes us to the prevention of unwanted pregnancy. Because there's a pregnancy that is wanted and there is the one that is not wanted, which now results in abortion. So there are different methods that a woman can use or couples can use to prevent unwanted pregnancy. We have the male and female condom. It's either the man uses it or the woman uses it. There are, there's this OCP, that's oral contraceptive pills that a, lady, a woman can take on a daily basis there's an emergency pill that she can take, take immediately after the act. There's implant on, there's implants that she can just insert underneath the skin on her arm, and that controls a wanted pregnancy. Then she can go for injectables and all of that. But if, for example, a couples have sat down to say, no, we don't want to disrupt the process in our body. We don't want to disturb the, the mechanism of the, the woman's body. The man is agreeing with the woman. There are other methods that, that you can, they can go into. There's this method I call it beat circle. Yeah, please help me with that bag. No. My school bag. The bead circle. This bead circle can be used. This is it. This is the bead circle. It can be used to prevent pregnancy. This bead circle, how does it work? You see this, you see this arrow. It's pointing to the right, to the red bead and there's this there's this ring that is on the bead so before the onset of break of menstruation the ring is on this pointed arrow the arrow is directing you on how to use how to move your ring on the bead. Each bead represents each day of a woman's circle. This very red bead here is indicating the first day of your menstrual flow. The red bead here is indicating the first day of a woman's menstrual flow. So on that first day of her flow, she is going to move this ring so this red bead, that is indicating the first day of her flow. So the next day, 
she will move it to the next bead, which is the brown one. Just like that. She will keep moving it. She keeps moving it until it gets to this white line. By the time it gets to the white bead, this white bead is telling her that, ha, look at it, so this number of days, within this number of days, this is when you are likely to ovulate. Are you getting it? So, yes, yeah. So for those of us that cannot be taking tablets on a daily basis, we don't want to inject ourselves. We don't want to implant anything into our body. This bead is recommended for us. So by the time the ring gets to the white bead, as you are moving it, you are counting your circle. By the time it gets to this white bead, it will not give you an alarm. Ah, within this white, uh, within this period, I don't know which of the day, because you have not really counted your, your, your safe and your unsafe period. This will guide. So I don't know which of the days I am safe, I am unsafe to have sex. So in this period, you and your husband is going to reach an agreement. Fine, you, the, your husband may not be able to stay away from sex. Even you as a woman, you may not be able to stay away from sex. But what you need to do is to use a backup method. You use a backup method to prevent pregnancy at this period, this number of days, but as the the, the ring is moving. What is the backup method I'm talking about? It is the use of condom. Because some men will tell us, I cannot use condom for my wife on a daily basis. Some men don't even gain good erection with the use of condom. But if they have reached an agreement that, ah, we don't want to use any method, let's use the natural method. Let's you do this, let's do that. And the withdrawal method is not 100% safe. They can as well use for at least for like two, three days, three, two, three consecutive times within this period. It's very okay. Then by the time the ring gets to the brown bead, as the circle is moving, they cannot go for skin to skin. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. That is for the bead method. Then the, another method is the body temperature recording. Mm. From the onset of a woman's menstrual flow, from that very first day, what she does is she starts taking a, a body temperature. Once she gets, she wakes up from bed in the morning, first thing in the morning, that's to say a thermometer will be by a pillow. So as she wakes up that morning, she will just take the thermometer and put on that needs her armpit. Or if it is the digital one, she just press and check, then she record it on a daily basis like that. The time that she will now know that, ah, I am on safe this time, she will see that they're taking her, she monitor, she's monitoring her time that the temperature is, is regular. But by the time you now discover that it's increasing, you know that, okay, this is my ovulation period. Then you may now say no to him or you use a backup method. And the backup method that I've earlier said, it's the condom I have said, either the male or the female time. Then another method is monitoring the vaginal secretion on a daily basis. The, va the vaginal secrets fluids or mucus on a daily basis. During the period of ovulation, the secretion that will come out from the woman, it's usually slimy. It's like egg whites. Each time you check, you watch your vagina, you bring out the secretion. You will see, you will see it during the, that is during ovulation. It is usually slimy. By the time you, you take it in between your finger, it stretches. So that tells you, ah, this time is a, is a, this is a warning sign. I must not do it. 
And if I must do it, I must use a backup method. Then a woman can also calculate, if you don't want to, if you don't just, just want to use a backup method, you can, it will take you time in calculating your save and your unsafe period. It's, it will take a woman six good months in calculating her unsafe period. How is she going to do it? The first month, she'll write down the dates of her flow. The next month, she will write down the date, the first day. She started, she write it down again. Then she will calculate the days in tavern. Am I having 25 days circle? Am I having 26 days circle? Is it a 28 day circle? So by the time she has recorded it for six good months, then she will now take the highest one amongst the six. Then she, if it if the highest is twenty eight days, she will write it down twenty eight days. So the mid circle of the, the mid days of that twenty eight days is a ovulation period. The mean circle, that is, if our 28 day, uh, the, the mean of that 28 days is the 14th day. So you are going to take two days to that day or three days before rather the, to be on the safer side because the, uh, the spermatozoa has spent for 78, 72 hours before it wears off, before it, it dies off in a woman's body. So she will take three days to that day and three days after, making it one week just to be on the safe side. She can also take two days to the day and two days after. So she will now know that, okay, on these days, I'm going to abstain from sexual intercourse. By the time they reach an agreement like that, unwanted pregnancy is being prevented. So, I won't made us know the, the, the preventive measures of a wanted pregnancy. Let me quickly let Rod take us through the effect of having too many children in the part of the woman. We call it the grand multiparity. What is the effect? Because some women still don't know. They feel, ah, I can have as many, uh, anytime it comes. I have it. It is the Lord that, brought, that brings children. It is still the Lord that takes care of the children. Fine. If we don't want to involve in a wanted uh, pregnancy, I, I mean abortion, and pregnancy is coming on yearly basis and a woman is giving birth, there is also an effect on her body, on her system. We have the physical effect on her. There's a medical effect on her and there's a psychological effect. Mm -hmm. One of the physical effects on her is that you just see her looking older than her age with frequent childbearing. The woman looks older than her age. She will look so unkept. There's easy fatigue. She gets weak easily. Because our body tissues are fucked out. Mm -hmm. She's overusing the body. She's, she has sleep deprivation, taking care of too many children. Mm. Is the problem. She has low self-esteem. She's always ashamed of herself. She, so, socially, she's not there. She's always withdrawn from her mates, from social group. She can't meet up. Hey, we are 
are buying this clothes for this. We are buying this as well for this uh, occasion. And I, one of our sister is, is doing this. Let's contribute this. Mm -hmm. She will not be able to meet up as a result of the workload on her. Mm -hmm. So having too many children has a great effect on the woman. Psychologically, this woman is not complete. You see her, you feel she's, she, she's here. She will just be absent-minded. You will be talking to her. Good morning. You think she's looking at you. She's not hearing what you're saying. She has gone far. What's she thinking about? How is this good children going to feed? The first one is school is requesting for school fees. This one, they just drove her back from school. She did not buy books. She has not paid school fees. The other one, tying, tying, uh, some people tied uh, something. Uh, psychologically, she's down. Anxiety will set in. Hey, how am I going to cope? And there's all, always panic disorder in her. She's always panic. Hey, by the, by the time she sees this one coming, ah, uh, this one has come again to ask for this. Ah, mommy, oh, hey, hey. But if she have the numbers that she can conveniently cater for, all those stress, all those panic won't be there. So there is need for a woman to have the number of children that she can conveniently cater for without stressing herself out. And these too many children in a home can also bring marital dissatisfaction. It brings marital conflicts. There's always conflict between the man and the woman, which will not lead to violence. Any little thing, the man will just pick anger and start beating her. She's not the cause. So. By the time the, the, the first child comes and asks for school fees, daddy is saying, hey, hey whoa. Well, as I am now, I'm even thinking of how your younger ones will eat. Don't just bring your own. And mommy is saying, ah, be careful with him. Take it easy. It's not the cause. Maybe we are the one that caught the child. The child was sitting on their own. But they, we caught them. So please, let's take it easy with them. Before you know it, the man people confess and say, what are you saying? The next thing is, violence. It starts it start beating her up just for little thing. All prevention, she's requesting for, uh, for feeding allowance. Ah, that you are. The money you gave us last week. Oh, my teacher, there's no money again. There's no food stuff in the house again. The next thing is oh, that may come share. It comes share your time. Something is wrong with you. Check over for me. Did you give money in my pocket? Did you give me money to hold? Am I plucking it? Did you people want to kill me? Check it up, I will call over. That's, you will not kill yourself. We are not the cost. Oh, just that response. Hey, even we calm down. She starts pounding her. So, please. There is need for us to cut it. Let's cut it. Let's learn to cut it. It's very, very important. So medically, a woman can go down with anemia. Let me just quickly rush because of time. She can have anemia. That is low level, low blood level in the system. She's not having enough to eat. The one of grand is not even enough for the children to eat. She will be managing. That is the one you eat remain. Left over. That's what she will be eating. You get it. She, she will go down with anemia. Even the children are not even, let me not even go down to go to the children's side because they are not work yet. Amongst the children, you see Kwashoko. So I am really dealing on the woman's part so that we will know how to cut, cut it. Each, by, with frequent pregnancy, there's abnormal placentation. What do I mean? 
there's abnormal positioning of the placenta because the placenta of a teen does not Im embed in one place for two different times. That is why you will see women having placenta previa. That is the placenta coming before the baby. The baby is up, placenta is down. Mm -hmm. Because with, with, with subsequent pregnancies, placenta will always look for a fresh place to embed. It can never in, embed in one place on two occasions. That's not placenta for you. So there's abnormal placentation. And another thing, there's a broad shop placenta. What do I mean by a broad shop placenta? A placenta that has been embedded. It, you, you will not say along the line, it will just detach. Mm -hmm. Because there's no space for it to really keep filled. What can be firm in the place that it has embedded. Yes, a broad shop placenta, partial separation of the placenta. And this can lead to bleeding in the woman during pregnancy. And also, there's, as a result of this, there's malpresentation of the, of, 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 of the baby. When the placenta is low lying, the baby assumes different position. The baby can lie crossed. Because the baby too wants to be comfortable in the uterus. The baby can lie plants can come with the bumble, just like that, the less can be coming. So with frequent pregnancies, there's small presentation of the baby. Then there's uterine atony. A woman does it in a case where you see that a woman gives birth and the uterus refuses to contract because immediately after a, a, a delivery, the, contract, the, the uterus is supposed to contract. They'll start arresting themselves. But in the case of uterine atony, with subsequent uh, delivery and uh, uh, pregnancies and delivery, there is atony of the uterus. The uterus will just be flabby. Is with the, all the, 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 the vessels are weak. The arteries are weak. They will just be flabby. They will open their mouth and at the end of the day, you see the woman pouring. You see the woman, the woman pouring. That's when you start hearing different languages. Oh, egg by me. Egg by me. Ah, please. Please help me. Please don't let me die. Please, ah, Oluwa, Oluwa, Bami. Please come, oh, God, come to my rescue. God, come to my rescue. Please don't let me die. Please don't accept my soul now. <laughs> As a result of bleeding. So there's also you trying rupture. There are some cases that, you know, this uterus of a thing, this womb, is like a balloon. If you take a fresh balloon now, let I, 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 I want to give us an experiment. Pick, pick two balloons. One, the two are new. Then you pick one out of it. You blow hair into it for the first time. After some time, you deflate the hair. Then do a comparison between the one you inflated hair on and the one that is new that some that you've not inflated. Look at it. You will see that the one you inflated is now a little bit enlarged, expand more than the new one. Then drop that one that you just inflate hair on for the first time. Drop it, then still put the new one down. Pick the third one. Inflate hair into it on two consecutive, consecutive times. Then compare it between the new one, the one that you inflated hair just once, and this one that you inflate hair on two different occasions. You will see that there is difference. That is how our womb is. So the more the woman carries pregnancy, the lighter the, the uterus. And it will get to a stage you see that as you are blowing hair in the, 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 the blue, blue, you are blowing hair into that balloon. You are blowing hair into that black balloon. You are deflating, you, are, you, blow, you, inflate, you inflate and deflate. You inflate and deflate. And after a while, you, you hear the next thing. Bwah! That is what happened to the uterus. So the next thing is rupture of the uterus. And 
And as a result, the woman will go down with bleeding. And if medical intervention is not is not well, is not carried out immediately, and in that case, is to just, just remove everything, remove the, the is removal of the uterus completely. That you just sterilize her. And if God help her, God, God is, let me say God is on her side. She gives birth in a the wrong place where a, uh, where the, a, a facility that is not well equipped. The next thing is she's crossing to the other side. She crossed to the other side of the road. So another thing on the part of the woman, the, 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 with subsequent babies, they, they go down with, chromosom with chromosomal abnormalities as when they gave birth to Mugo, Down syndrome. You give birth to a child that will just be looking for that is not useful as a result of their chromosomes. Then there's high mortality rate, high death rate. It can lead to it. There's stress incontinence leading to urinary urgency. So by the time the, ut you are, the uterus is carrying every time, the bladder, every time, you, it will be weak. They can't hold urine for a long period of time. The next thing, ah, they are running to the bathroom. They are running before some of them before they even get there. They some, something has dropped. And there's high rate of gestational diabetes. That's when you see women carrying pregnancy. The next thing she's having diabetes in pregnancy. And in the future, she will still go down with that diabetes. There's preeclampsia and there's eclampsia. What do I mean by preeclampsia? Pre be, she'll be having high blood pressure. She'll be having swollen legs, which is pida edema. There will be presence of protein in urine. And if all these three indices that I just mentioned are not well controlled, she go down with eclampsia. That is convulsion in pregnancy. And that can lead to cessation of blood to the baby in the womb, which can lead to fetal death, even maternal death. So I pray the Lord will help us. Amen. And sexually, this woman is always tired. At night, she is useless to her husband. Let me tell us. By the time she has overworked herself, the time daddy needs her, she is fagged out. After caring for five, six, seven children, kilo day, she won't have time for daddy again. And that will not make daddy to go out. So our women, please, let's be cautious. It's a contributing factor. By the time daddy calls today, there's no show. Tomorrow, you can no attack or no worry. The next thing, the sister in the office that is passing here and there, or the even can even be your next door neighbor that will satisfy himself with. I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for the time. Amen. I really appreciate it. God bless you all. Amen.